Hey you guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Fall has arrived. Tim and I are out on the water today and we are out here in the open water. Today we are going deep water fishing. Gonna focus on the spoon, maybe follow up with the swim bait, tail spinners, that sort of thing. But what we're gonna do today is focus on catching offshore open water fish. It's one of the most complicated things to do. It's one of the most difficult for anglers to wrap their minds around, but fall time is prime time. You can catch a lot of fish, you can catch them fast, and you can catch big ones. So today we're going deep offshore. Got him? That's a nice one. Oh, mine came off. That was a swapfish. Was it? Yeah. So the method with the spoon is we see the fish on the electronics. At the moment we're in 41 feet of water. The fish are from the bottom up to about 37 feet. So about four feet of fish. Let that spoon go all the way to the bottom. And the key is to get it down there quickly because when you get these fish revved up and going, you have to act fast. So let it go to bottom and if you keep a semi-tight line, when you drop a spoon, you get all this wobble, and that's what they're eating. But when you want to go to bottom, you actually keep a little pressure on that spool as it's sinking. It takes the wobble out and it'll sink like a bullet. You get down there about twice as quickly. Once you hit bottom, you snap that rod up, either a single pull or a double pull. And then the whole key to this thing is how you let it fall. You've got to be if you're tight, it's that same thing where it's gonna fall like a bullet, it's not gonna look good. If you're slack, you get this great fall, but they'll eat it, and then because it's a big hunk of lead, they spit it right back out before you can even do anything. So the key is to let it fall semi-slack. So where it's truly on a slack line, but you're right there, just behind that slack, kind of feathering it. Let me drop down here and I'll show you what I mean. So a little bit of pressure so that it sinks quickly. There we are. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull up, but I don't just lay my slack out immediately. I kind of follow it down. But it's still slack. Got him. Just like that. That's the idea, guys, right there. Nice fish. Got him? We're in them thick. So by staying semi tight, I feel the bite on the slack line through the line and they don't spit it out before I can get to them. That's the key. You will catch so many more fish on that semi-tight line than you ever will on a slack line or on a tight line. Nice. 
Where's it going? Jeez. Wow. Jeez. <laughs> Jeez. Same as the last two. The spooning can drive you crazy. If you have big long periods of time where they won't bite. But when it gets going, man, it's happening. Now, another tip or two for you guys. For the spoon fish, I'm putting a mask on, I'm getting burned. With the spoon fishing, you notice we are not playing these fish. We hit them and just start grinding. And that's because this is an ounce and three quarter spoon. These fish can spit it out very, very quickly. So stick them and as soon as you got them, you just go. Grind, 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 boat flip. And you see a lot of them are coming off as they're coming over the rail. So if you sat there and slow played them, they come off before they come over the rail. Now, because you bring them up so quickly, the pressure can wreak havoc on those fish. So it's important that you send them back down just as quickly. These are not fish you wanna be putting in a live well. They're gonna end up blowing up you're going to be killing a lot of these fish. But if you get them up fast, get them back down quick, no worse for wear. Next is going to be the equipment itself. Using shorter rods, seven foot, to seven foot three. And this is one of the few things that we do with straight fluoro. Straight 20 pound fluoro. Seems if we go lighter than 20 pound, you foul up a lot. You wrap your hook. 20 pounds seems to be rigid enough that it stays pretty good. You don't get a lot of those fouling issues. The reason that we go straight fluoro, I'm not gonna lie, CC is so much better at spooning than we are. Uh, she used to kick my tail when we would go out and spoon fish side by side. And the only difference is that she would throw fluoro or, or copoly and I was fishing braid the leader and she did it so many times that we finally started switching over and fishing straight fluoro and it got us a lot closer to a level playing field but there is something about that straight fluoro I think what it is that we're dropping through suspended fish so I think they were seeing the braid before they saw the bait you know they were running from that braid with the fluoro we don't have that problem so a little bit shorter, a little bit stouter rod so that you can get a snap hook set and then grind them really easy. You don't have a bunch of rod bowing in the middle of that fight. You want to get those fish up and in the boat and then straight fluoro. This is not complicated. You guys can do it.
Tim is getting him on the Damiki axe blade. We brought a bunch of that new stuff that we just unboxed with you guys. He's catched them on that. I went ahead and got that duo. Did it come off? Yeah. I got that little duo tail spinner. Seems to be good. Nice fish. Look at this bait. When you're doing this kind of fishing, a lot of the game is patience. There's no fast way to it. What Tim is doing is we're driving around, we've got a creek channel. We're following that creek channel up against structure, where it makes bends, where it comes up against points. We're checking all those edges, trying to find a grouping of fish. It's easy to find the singles, a fish here, a fish there. But what we need is a grouping of fish, ideally on bait fish. That's where we can drop down and really get them going. So Tim's looking at regular sonar, he's looking at side imaging, he's looking at down imaging. All of those things make this job easier. But keep in mind, we've been doing this since black and white grass. You know, it's no big deal. You can do this with any amount of electronics. But the more you have, you're looking at a wider area, you just do it faster. For this style of fishing, it's not uncommon to spend half of your day on the big motor, not even holding a rod. But when you do find them, you catch them really, really quickly. We had an absolute blast bringing you guys along, going out for these offshore deep water fish. It can be a lot of work, but as you can see, the reward is so good. You start catching those fish one after another after another, and then when it does slow down, you adapt. You switch to an underspin or a tail spinner, and you keep catching those fish. Really rewarding way to catch them this time of year. If there is bait in your waterways, Somewhere, these fish are bunching up on those bait fish, and this pattern is happening. Yeah, the key is always staying on the fish. You'll see Matt and I, we're always on the big motor. We're moving around because these fish come and go. So you got to keep moving around, get good with your electronics, get good with your sonar, find the fish, and get on them in a hurry. We hope you enjoyed coming along with us. If you did, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. We'll link all the gear down in the video description below. We'll talk to you soon. See ya.